Stefani. Call up Gwen Stefani, because this shit's bananas. That's right, it's a Hollaback Girl reference in 2014. Just shows how out of touch I am with the viewers. It's Rise of the Planet of the Apes versus King Kong. Cherish, why don't you go ahead and put up the monkey pun counter? Feel a lot of idioms coming on. Rise might not have the most star-studded cast, but I'd be a monkey's uncle if there aren't a few worth mentioning. First up, we have my boy James Franco playing a scientist named Will Rodman. He gives a very strong performance alongside his father, the great John Lithgow. We also get a nice small role from Draco Malfoy. There's a love interest by the name of Caroline, but honestly, that's the only real hiccup in the film. The only part I didn't really think was necessary at all. The best performance on the human side of things, though, comes from Naomi Watts. Her interactions with the computer-generated animal never looked more convincing. Adrian Brody's for some reason in this thing, trying his hand in the action role, I guess. It doesn't really work. It's not the worst I've ever seen. It, it's just kind of odd. And apparently he was the only choice for the role. Peter Jackson wanted to do King Kong forever, and when he finally got the chance, he's like, I need f***ing Adrian Brody. Jack Black is also present. He does a nice job. And Tom Hanks' son, Colin, is also in the mix. Smaller role, but still there, still still counts. When it comes down to it, there's only one performance that's really the most appealing. And that's the one by Andy Serkis. I, this was like a banana. Put that in the counter. We'll do it, if you didn't. Serkis does, I call him Serkis, he does all the motion capturing for both Caesar and Kong. Smeagol gives us yet one more reason to enjoy a fully grown man in a spandex suit, jumping around on stage like an idiot, playing a game of monkey see, monkey do. He brings Kong and Caesar to life with his physicality and impressive expressions. Hell, that ending of King Kong really moved me. I mean, the fact that I could get this emotional from a giant CGI gorilla is, is telling of the performance, it's telling of the job he did. It's so sad. He just slips away, he just slips right off that Empire State Building. I'm not huge on remakes. In fact, I think they turn out pretty awful most of the time. But with films like these, where it's very reliant on the special effects, the makeup, the costumes, I think it's warranted here. Kong is the story of an ambitious movie producer trying to find his next big picture. Really, that's just a reason to get to the island and kidnap the eighth wonder of the world. Come to think of it, I really have no idea how they moved Kong off the island, but that's just a small nitpick, right? That's not nothing major. Kong, of course, throws a monkey wrench into things. Added to the counter. By breaking free of his shackles, getting out of the stage, and running amok in the city. But the real story is one of love. Because after all, Twas Beauty killed the beast. <sighs> Women. Right? But this wild creature learns to respect Anne. He fights for her survival constantly, both on Skull Island and in the city. It probably could have been an hour shorter, but, you know, whatever. We, we got our money's worth. Say what you will about Mr. Peter Jackson, the man sure knows how to stretch the source material. Isn't that right, Hobbit? Rise of the Planet of the Apes is essentially the plot from Deep Blue Sea. For the five of you who know what that is. The humans have found a cure for Alzheimer's by doing some experimentation short for experimentation, on monkeys. Naturally, monkey shit hits the fan, and the program is shut down. Fortunately, Will finds a freshly birthed baby in the science department. How was this missed? What, what, were the, what do the scientists do if they can't even figure out if a monkey's pregnant? There was also zero trace of blood or other liquids on the ground. It was just a very clean-cut pregnancy. Maybe I'm just dick-picking. It just seemed very uh, convenient. Anyway, he raises this little chap, I say chap now, and he grows into a fine young ape named Caesar. Everything's all dicks and ducks until Caesar's eventually thrown in a monkey prison. He's poked and prodded, thus the rise of the apes commences. It's a very cool transition, and you really feel sympathetic for Caesar and his cohorts. Both these flicks have a slow build, but Kong is definitely the more action-packed. What we have here is an insanely cool battle with Kong versus the V-Rexes. A dinosaur stampede in the gorge! Simba's down there! There's also giant creepy-ass bugs that 
Fun fact, we're cut out from the original 1933 film. It was shot, but wasn't put in because the test audience was scared of their f***ing minds. And of course, we're left with the classic ending on top of the Empire State Building. The apes look phenomenal. They look extremely convincing. And it's really fun to see their rise in the last 30 minutes, fighting on the overused Golden Gate Bridge. But I'm also a big fan of the entire prison break section of the movie, where Caesar himself is teaching the apes how to get out of the situation. Who says you can't teach a monkey new tricks? Yeah, I'm, I'm cheating. Brass monkey, that monkey, monkey. King Kong's music is some of the best in the business. James Newton Howard is the man to thank for that, wrangling up a Golden Globe Award for Best Original Score. Howard Shore, who originally worked on it with Peter Jackson, popped out. And that's really telling because these two work together on the Lord of the Rings franchise. So if Peter Jackson let this guy leave, he clearly had something specific in mind. And you know, I applaud him for that. King Kong sounds great too, and that's because of a combination of Andy Serkis and a slowed down lion's roar played in reverse. I have no idea though, I mean that's what I read. I mean do I know? Do I really know? It could have been a recording of two humpback whales having sex. Was it? No. Was it? No. The Rise of the Planet of the Apes, side note, that's a f***ing dumb title, doesn't shy away from the music either. Patrick Doyle, whose previous works include The Goblet of Fire and Thor, team up with the Hollywood Studio Symphony to create emotions in light of little to no dialogue. Wow. Don't you know you're gonna the this was fun. As fun as a barrel full of monkeys. Fun it. You heard me talk a while about two films I really loved, and now it's your turn. Are apes more your cup of cock, or do you swing more in the big gorilla's direction? Like, comment, and subscribe, because that's what keeps the monkey off my back. I'm still doing it. I'm still doing it. More than just reviews, this is Movie Feuds. Does anybody remember Congo or Mighty Joe Young? <sighs> Congo.